Well, things are getting back to normal here at the Memorial Center as the Peterborough Peets were one of the busier teams at the OHL trade deadline. They shipped their captain, Connor Boland, and World Junior Gold medalist Nick Ritchie to the Sioux Greyhounds. But GM Mike Oak says he likes what he got back in return, not only for the present, but also for the future. It's not a move to, uh, to throw in the towel, so to speak. Uh, we felt that with the moves uh, and the opportunities that were presented to us to acquire uh, both Kyle and then subsequently Nathan, that you know, both of those players we feel are going to contribute to, to our hockey club now. Jenkins is a smooth skating defenseman who has an offensive knack putting up 24 points so far this season and will be around next year as well. 21-year-old left winger Pantsell is a proven sniper and is on pace to match his 42 goals of last year, but says it was tough to leave Sudbury where he played his entire career. I've met a lot of people there on and off the ice through whether it was hockey, school, even absent family there. So it's tough to leave them, but here I'm closer to home and the guys are already making me feel like one of the boys so far. So I guess it's kind of easier when you're 21 to kind of move into a new team and, and meet new guys. So I like it so far. It's awesome. Head coach Jody Hull likes what Pansell brings to the rink and calls him a low-maintenance kind of player. As far as Nathan Pansell up front, uh, for me that, that move was just to alleviate some of the scoring uh, that we lost in Nick Ritchie. And, uh, their stats are almost identical the last couple years, so uh, hopefully, uh, you know, that's the case. Pansell will fit in nicely on the top line between the two perennial setup men with Hunter Garland and Eric Cornell. He says he's still getting some kinks out on the ice, but getting to know the systems. Pencil me in as a goal scorer, and that's kind of what I want to bring here, playing with some good guys. I want to be a finisher with them. I know there's some good passers on the team, so hopefully I can just finish it and get some goals here. Pansell says the trade has motivated him and he sees this as an opportunity to challenge himself. This feels like a new start, new town and new billets, new, new people and it kinda, it's kind of like pressing the restart button almost and kind of regrouping and, and getting out of your comfort zone and kind of restarting. Now don't expect the Peets to name their 56 team captain anytime soon. Coach Hull says they may just ride out the season this way, but nobody's been hotter than forward Josh McDonald, who prior to Saturday night's 1-0 win against Oshawa, had posted seven goals and four assists in just six games. Now the Peets are looking to get onto a win streak here when they host Owen Sound on Thursday night, and then they bounce back at home on Saturday when Ottawa rolls into town. Both those games start at 7.05. Jesse Thomas, Checks Newswatch, Peterborough. Hockey fans understand that you can throw a hat onto the ice and still keep your seat. That's when a hat trick is scored, of course. But when you throw a jersey onto the ice, you can expect to be escorted out of the arena. And as Leaf fans found out in Toronto last night, police might also charge you with public mischief. In Hogtown, fed up Leaf fans have taken to protest by throwing jerseys on the ice. An inconvenience, this halts play and does get some coverage on highlight reels, but what purpose does it serve? After a miserable Western road swing, things didn't improve at home as the Leafs lost 4-1 to Carolina and the fans let them have it, tossing four sweaters on the ice. Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment confirmed that at least three of the fans were escorted out of the building where police charged them with public mischief. Has this gone too far? Yeah, I saw each of those jerseys and I think just for such a historic franchise, it's kind of disrespectful to be tossing such a jersey onto the ice, but... What can you do, I guess? The Leafs aren't doing well. Maybe that'll, uh, you know, get the uh, players going a bit. They make big money. They need a bit of, you know, kick in the butt to uh, play a little better, play as a team. And uh, it's a bit disrespectful, I think. I, I know why they're mad. Like, I'm mad too. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's kind of, it's dangerous, basically. Pete's director of communications, Burton Lee, says he hasn't seen a Pete's jersey hit the ice, but says the Pete's fans know the protocol. The city of Peterborough has rules as do the Peterborough Peets where if you do so, throw something onto the ice that's unauthorized, you'll be removed from the facility and there may be some repercussions after that. Fans may hesitate to throw a hat on the ice as they may fear losing it, but that's not the case here. The nice thing is uh, any fan that does throw a hat on the ice for that reason will get it back. Uh, they'll be lost and found down at, the, uh, down at the office of the rink staff and they'll be happy to get your hat back for you. Fans in Peterborough are deciding to keep their jerseys on their backs. We'll see if the trend continues in Toronto. Jesse Thomas, Czechs Newswatch, Peterborough. The Canada versus Russia hockey rivalry is one of the greatest in all sports. It's historic going back to the Cold War. And for Team Canada, there's extra pressure to perform this year. Not only being the host, we've also been in the medal drought. The last time we struck gold was in 2009 when we hosted the tournament in Ottawa. 
Canada was a heavy favorite entering the gold medal game, going undefeated and outscoring its opponents 21 to 4. Tickets for the gold medal tilt in Toronto sold out quickly, but these hometown hockey fans flocked to sports bars to cheer on the red and white. Well, it's a packed house at Champ Sports Bar. Everyone's crowded in to watch Team Canada take on Russia for the gold medal. Now, before the game, I caught up with former Pete's captain, Brent Tully. He was also the captain of that 1994 World Junior gold medal team, and he talked a little bit about the pressure the players might be facing ahead of the game. We had the um, opportunity to play both the years in Europe, and, and it was literally just us and the other teams and a handful of fans from Canada and a couple of reporters. But, um, you know, now we, we, we talked about the pressure of, you know, being in the spotlight, especially being in Toronto, and, and there's really nowhere to hide, so to speak. And uh, so I think Hockey Canada does a great job of secluding the guys, keeping them focused and prepared. And, and obviously they're, they've been made available, and you can tell through the games that they are having fun. And, and that's a huge key to success uh, at any level in any sport. So. Tully and members of the 1993-94 gold medal team were honored before Canada's quarterfinal game. He says it was great to catch up with old friends. It, you know, the last time you probably saw many of them was walking into the dressing room after that gold medal game, getting on the plane uh, and whatnot. So it was really cool, and, and the conversations just pick up like it was last year, as opposed to 20 years ago, which is scary to say. But uh, many of the fans at Champs had a good feeling about the gold medal game. I got off work at 4.30, I was down here at 5.30, uh, holding this table for all my buddies. We got 12 of us sitting here, so ready to cheer on Canada. I know they came in kind of as the underdogs, but I think they can do it. I really think they can do it this year. I think so. I thought that Canada was going to win since their pregame against Russia. Um, yeah, well, you know what, they got some speed. Domi's pretty sick, and I think we got this. Pete's forward Nick Ritchie will bring his gold medal experience back to Peterborough, and hopefully it'll rub off on his teammates. The last time a Pete's draft pick won a gold medal at the World Juniors was Cameron Mann back in 1996. Jesse Thomas, Czechs News Watch, Peterborough.